dear students today we'll talk about one more topic in the metal cutting and forming that is forging and rolling okay. the contents are rolling forging extrusion and wire bar and wire and ball drawing you can also see from the figure that what exactly we are rolling forging extrusion and wire drawing all these things let us look one by one here to see that i have already given introduction about the metal forming process uh, I, i will have to explain about the uh, stress strain curve where exactly this metal forming process is going to occur that is especially at the yielding means that is in the plastic zone so uh, that is above part above the, the upper part of the stress strain curve that is in the yield point wherever the upper yield point lower yield point uh, deformation takes place that is plastic deformation that part comes under the metal forming process so rolling forging extrusion all these are coming comes under uh, this metal forming process we it lies in the plastic zone it is the la- after the elastic zone okay let us look at one by one so there are two types of deformation one is bulk deformation one is sheet metal process one bulk deformation where the drastic change in the shape and size of the component will take place for example you take a rolling then you can see from the figure that work piece i mean the diameter of the work piece of the shaft or any pipe structure will going to reduce drastically whereas in forging the shape complete shape of the red dot metal is going to change whereas in extrusion you can see that where you can extrude the product means the whole shape whole the component the geometry itself is going to change or in wire drawing the the metal piece is converted into thin wires so all these are bulk transformation bulk deformation process whereas if you go to the sheet metal process let's see there are various process in the sheet metal process also all these are bending cup drawing shearing bending means maybe v bend or u bend or cup drawing you can call it as a cup drawing the shearing you can it may be a scissor kind of cut maybe it may take l shape or i shape something like this okay all this process will discuss so plastic deformation operation that induces shape changes on the work piece by plastic deformation under the forces applied by the various tools and dies that's what i told so all this process metal forming process will comes under the plastic deformation why it is called plastic deformation because once you change the shape and you take back the load the shape whatever the change in shape it cannot be it, it cannot be taken back it cannot be taken back because it lies because it undergoes a deformation in the plastic so it's a permanent kind of deformation that's the meaning of this plastic deformation next bulk deformation process this process involves a large amount of plastic deformation the cross section of work piece changes without volume change the ratio of cross section area volume is very small performed as cold warm and hot working operation you see in from the last uh, diagrams that the rolling forging all this thing how this bulk deformation means the whole drastic geometry of the material is going to change from one shape to other shape this is what called bulk deformation whereas volume will not change only the cross section will going to change that is the meaning of this next there are two types of working in the uh, plastic or a sheet metal process or any forging technique or extrusion technique all this thing there is cold working warm working and hot working cold working range from the metal forming operation that is at the ambient temperature if you do at the normal temperature the room temperature ambient temperature that is called cold working if you do in between uh, if you rise a little bit temperature higher temperature i mean that is called ambient uh, that is called um, the average like what do you call the ambient temperature is nothing but room temperature whereas if you go for the another when you go, when you reach just when you eat to red hot state and then you then you change the shape that becomes very easy for us because when you, i think you are seeing from the blacksmith that is whenever you want to change the shape whenever you want to sharpen the tool you will going to heat it till the red hot 
state so the red dot state then 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 that process is called that working metal uh, metal metal temperature the work metal melting temperature if the work warm working temperature that lies between 0.3 tm to 0.5 tm this is the range of the warm working whereas in hot working it is more than 0.5 tm to 0.75 melting means the whatever the melting temperature is 0.5 times if you multiply by 0.75 times that be, that that at, if you heat the metal to the, that range that temperature then it is very easy to for processing so there are various advantages and disadvantages on cold warm and hot working okay advantages cold working can be performed at the room temperature advantages are better accuracy better surface finish high strength hardness of the part no heating is required if you just take the metal with a, in the room temperature and you if you heat it by a hammer if you sharpen it it is going to it is going to become very hard the surface finish become very it become very smooth so it's something like a mirror finish and accuracy is also very good only advantage is here is the no heating means heating is not required but the disadvantage is higher force of power as i told if you want to bend a structure if you want to bend a work metal piece at the room temperature you require a lot of force this is one of the greatest advantage disadvantages here limitation to the amount of forming additional unhealing for some material is required some material is not capable of cold working whereas you cannot do all the material for cold working only selected material can be done for this cold working process next we'll go to the warm working the the perform temperature above the room temperature then then what we have seen that above the room temperature above the room temperature below the 0.5 tm that is melting temperature melting temperature tm that is called warm working temperature or you can call it as a recrystallization temperature okay so this what are advantages if you do if you choose warm working in the warm working lower force and power more complex part shapes no annealing is required no in the uh, because some met- materials will be there you need to heat for little bit time little bit for little temperature and only if you require a little low, a slight force is required to change the shape so and more complex part you cannot change you cannot do that which so, I means if you have to change some modifications in the tools you can make it you can just eat it something like a your hacks whatever the agricultural tools you can do it with a warm working process because here no annealing is required annealing means no cooling process is required okay disadvantages are very some investment in the furnaces is needed because you require if you want to heat any material in the furnace kind of thing that becomes a one of the investment here so that is one of this is one of the disadvantages here so how about hot working hot working involves the deformation of preheated material at temperature above the recrystallization temperature means almost you are reaching to the 0.57 times of the melting temperature you are not going to reach exactly to the melting temperature just below the melting temperature that is above the recrystallization temperature and melting temperature if you eat to the red hot state of okay then it is called hot working then it is called hot working advantages the big amount of forming is possible means if you want to change the shape any change shape especially in the forging technique and extrusion technique you will use this hot working process lower forces are required and power are lower power are required the materials forming materials with low ductility no work hardening and therefore no additional annealing is required if you heat to the high temperature and if you can change the shape then no annealing is required additional additional annealing is not required and disadvantages are there low accuracy surface finish becomes very rough because it becomes oxidation whenever you heat any metal and we cool down definitely oxidation will occurs okay this is one of the disadvantages and shorter tool life with the tool life of the tool i mean dies or whatever the forging tool dies whatever tools you lose the life of that it becomes very short means it become the the more wear it will takes with the meaning of this next we'll go to the rolling process deformation process in which work thickness is reduced by the compressive forces exerted by two opposing rolls from the diagram you can see that one roll will be rotating in a clockwise other roll will be rotating in the anti clockwise direction the work the brown color sheet is a metal thick metal piece whenever 
the thickness is reduced at the other end whenever if you have for example if you have 10 mm of thickness here whenever you adjust the roller gap all these things whatever the desired thickness you require that can be taken out that's what the meaning of this rolling means just reducing the thickness of the material this is the process of rolling so so can you see the two rollers here this is the roller two rollers here and this is screw adjusting screw at this based on the thickness you required you tighten the rollers position okay and if you supply the sheet metal or sheet whatever the sheet okay you apply it so it will come in between the material piece so that can you see from the down diagram that the below diagram here so here you can change the shape mean change the thickness of the material the rotating rolls perform two main function pull the work into the gap between them and friction by the friction between the work and part because of the two roll whenever two rollers are rotating in opposite direction when you just keep on small material it will pull automatically means because of the friction simultaneously squeezes once once the material is taken into the gap and it squeezes and reduces the cross section or thickness of the material based on types of rolling based on the workpiece geometry flat rolling shape rolling to reduce the thickness to a rectangular cross section Uh, sometimes you required a i beam structure wherever you do the, you use this i beam structure in uh, construction civil constructions okay whenever you constructing any house industries whatever thing you you put that as a the, the material the reinforcement material okay and uh, based on the work temperature hot rolling and cold rolling you can do two types of rolling one is hot rolling cold rolling because based on the requirement see these are some of the examples structural shape i shape and just flat bar coils all these things billet slab which will be used for different application springs if you want to make a springs that is coils for a shock absorber purpose for a trucks you can use that high structures are used for the civil construction bars rods all these things are used for machineries and engine parts billets you will use it for some of the, some industrial machineries okay so flat rolling there are some many analysis okay for this uh, based on the radius the radius is a very important thing and thickness based on the thickness the roll of the radius of the rollers and contact angle so you can you can you can decide which of the thickness you want next we'll go to the uh, important things in here that is called various configuration rolling mills there are two i roll mills i'll just keep it out because of numerical is not there but still i just want for various configuration types of can you see this this is called two high rolling mill this is called two high rolling mill. that is two rollers will be there in between there's a material and it will be squeezed and pushed out whereas three high rolling mill is there you can see that the three rolling mills here once it is passed again it is passed in between the other two rollers there's a the meaning of this okay so you can still you can reduce the give for a better Uh, accuracy see here this move called four i rolling wheel can you see the alignments of the roller one is bigger roller other is smaller roller whenever this roller rotate because here whenever you use two rollers you cannot achieve the complete uniform uh, thickness okay whenever you go for four i four i roll mill mill or cluster milling you what this arrangements will give a better better accurate dimension and thickness okay we can achieve the thickness whatever thickness desired thickness you want you will get the uniform thickness this is the meaning of this okay so there will be no slip whenever you because in the two in the two i rolls there is a chances of slipping there is a chances of the retain the same like some material some thickness will not be maintained for the same time. say means thickness is not cannot be maintained whereas here it can, clearly you can maintain by adjusting the four rollers here next tandem rolling mill this is a configuration of tandem rolling mill can you see that these are the series of two roll mills which is attached okay if at the one stage a little bit of squeeze is done means little bit almost squeezing operation is done and it is pulled to second stage from the second stage to third stage like this you can do. this is called tandem rolling mill so various shapes can be produced by the shape rolling the bar i told as the rail road is a very good example where you can see that all this start from rolling operations okay these are some of the operations here these are the different shapes here
rollers h cross section i cross section okay all these are the some the examples next we will go to thread rolling bulk deformation procedure to form threads on the cylindrical parts by rolling them between the two dies most important commercial process for mass producing are bolts and screws so you can see this whenever you want sometimes you need to roll the material which is having a thread which is having a thread over that surface because this is very much required sometimes in some operations and some application so then they will use this thread they will use this nuts and you can see that these are the bolt and screw bolt and screws are inserted between it then it is pulled down instead of roller they will keep the screws so they will roll it all the screw what happens then you will get a threaded what of thread is is there on the screw it will be uh, it will get indented in same thing same shape or same size will be embossed on this the material next this is from the process of thread rolling process can you see that thread rolling process whenever you want to make a threads over the surfaces there is a thread kind structure here in between that the green color part whenever you roll it over that you will get the same threads of surfaces of this next one more thing is called ring rolling ring rolling can you see that this is sometimes you need to manufacture the rings for bearing some other application so then you go into the how to make that ring so this is a, it's a difficult process you require a lot of things here can you see that there are two rollers here but still if you want to maintain the thickness the diameter all these things you require the, this configuration so let us stop at this stage next class we will come up with the new video thank you